A report has come out from GamesBeat and some other sources who have corroborated it publicly about how the studio behind Ori, a beautiful game, is not the best place to work. This is really unfortunate because, in my opinion, when you have a game like Ori that is a really beautiful, touching game, to hear what it's like behind the scenes and what the employees are going through uh, being so negative, uh, it's, it's just really unfortunate. Let's dive into this story and talk about it a little bit. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my videos, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to know when they go live. Thank you so much for watching. And a quick note on the Ukraine fundraiser. Uh, we hit it. We passed it. We're at $1,040. Thank you so much. If you want to donate, you can still donate today over at Project Hope, or you can donate at the bit.ly still, bit.ly slash let's help Ukraine and uh, help out some Ukrainians. Thank you, everybody who donated. This is great. That's going to go to help a lot of people. Um, talking about this Ori story here for a moment, I just want to take you through the GamesBeat article. And this is from um, Dean Takahashi, who talked about how obviously we all love the Ori games, but it turns out working at the studio isn't great. They have a culture that, and I'm just going to paraphrase what I remember from reading the article a few days ago. They have a culture where they'll use just language that is inappropriate to be using in a workplace. They encourage more openness, but that has sort of led to just poor usage of language in a way that has made employees very uncomfortable and, and made them leave. So reading through this article, I think some of the stuff that comes out are about <laughs> uh, their plans for the next game and etc. I don't I just laugh because I'm trying to find the right words to describe this. So let's just let's just read what's been written. Uh, but the studio's team, the studio's behind the scenes atmosphere does not match the tranquility of its games. Based on interviews with current and former employees, many employees had problems with the founders, Thomas Mahler and Gennady Coral. It is illuminating to see these allegations arose at a small company with all remote practices. A private company that treasures its independence and anti-corporate culture still, uh, the casual racism, sexism, and bullying amounted to what one developer said was death by a thousand cuts. So basically... The developers took pride in their work and they love watching the fan reactions when the game shipped, but many found themselves wondering if the results were worth it. We really created something special, and I know the only way I was able to reconcile it was I was able to watch people on Twitch and watch other people get moved by it, and that was actually part of my healing process, said one developer, because maybe my suffering was worth it because, of, because other people felt something. In the end, I mean, so many of us were burnt out. So... I don't think anybody should need to suffer to make something moving and and captivating to audiences. It's that's just really really not the way that it's supposed to work. And then we see how the the founders basically talk to each other publicly. Um you can see this message here basically where he says that nobody cares about what you think. And then Thomas replies to him. And this is just in a public setting. So it just, it doesn't, why would you conduct yourself in that way? You know, uh, moon developers told GameSpeed that they found the studio's culture oppressive. They alleged that the leaders used calls for an open and honest workplace as a pretense for abuse. The founders criticized the work of employees in public chats and were stingy with praise. So far, no one is suing or claiming on unlawful labor, but many workers are fed up with what they see as inappropriate behavior by the founders. As an example, uh, Mahler and Corolla regularly made unprofessional and offensive comments. Tyler is the only person who is aware of my devious plans, and then I'm not going to read the rest of it. Like, um, So he makes an anti-Semitic remark based on what I see here as a joke in a public area where everybody can read it. Uh, the context of the conversation suggested that Mahler was truly making a joke, but it's alarming to think he felt it was safe and appropriate to say such a thing in a company chat. One developer said the chat was rough, 
because the founders felt free to make jokes about their penises. Um, the, the idea that you would think that that's okay in a group chat in a professional environment where you've hired people to work as developers and creators, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Do whatever you want when you're joking with your BFFs. Apparently the two founders are BFFs, but you don't need to subject your coworkers to that. It's really, it's really uncomfortable, especially like, like imagine you're a new employee and the first thing you see is two guys joking about that. It's just, it's, it sets the tone immediately for the type of environment that you've gotten yourself into. Um, language and chat sessions. Uh, oh, sorry. We saw plenty of evidence of harsh language and chat sessions that we reviewed while the founders constantly pushed for quality. They also gave conflicting or unclear directions when it came to feedback. They veered off plan and pushed for changes that threw devs off schedule, and that contributed to crunch. They built a remote team in many different countries, but this blurred the work time zones. They were kinder in person, but the pandemic meant they couldn't get together for retreats. And so the harsh online culture prevailed over a more benign in-person one. Praise was rare. Turnover was high, but the founders recruited new employees on promises of large bonuses. The tech tools that helped the team communicate could also be used to monitor behavior. In one case, Mueller wanted a character in an upcoming game to be raped. It took about a month to convince him that was a bad idea for a plot in a video game where the object was to provide the character with a motivation for revenge. While Moon's games have won praise, those who felt the company, the left companies say they were scarred with mental health problems. That's just, that's a lot. Um, so first of all, if, if your main crutch for making a character feel motivated to continue on their path of vengeance or whatever is because they were raped, that has largely been criticized by other writers for years as just one of the weakest pathetic ways to have character motivation. It, it's such a sensitive topic and it's a very serious topic in our culture. And for so long, writers would just use that as a crutch and be like, oh, well, that happened to them. So now they're going to go on a killing spree, right? Or whatever they're going to do. They're just going to go fight, fight crime or whatever they're going to do. And it just sort of became this crutch. So to hear that their, their big idea was to write that in and their whole studio is basically like, that's a really dumb idea. It just, it just, it's really disappointing, I think is the best way to put it, in my opinion. Uh, they actually responded to a lot of these allegations of the workplace, of workplace behavior. We've gave Moon Studios leaders a chance to respond to our reporting, and Mahler and Coral sent GamesBeat this response. And here's the thing. This is like a big non-apology. So here's what they, they said. So... We've already heard that people in the workplace felt uncomfortable. People in the workplace felt like they needed to, they, what was the specific wording used? They were scarred with mental health problems. And then this is the response that the, the founders made. It's, it's really just, it's unfortunate. We don't believe the experiences suggested by your questions are representative of more than 80 Moon Studios team members who are thriving and doing great work every day, nor do we believe they are representative of the experiences of former members of our team. In fact, we are very proud of our history of making people happy, advancing their careers, and contributing to their financial success. We built Moon Studios with a simple premise. First, we wanted to create a distributed studio that is not limited by geographic boundaries, enabling us to draw the top talent from around the world. Second, we wanted to foster a vibrant culture where our team thrives and delivers the very best work in our industry. And finally, from day one, we set out to share the profits and rewards of our efforts with the full team. We believe we have succeeded. What makes our team so powerful is our global and cultural diversity. We have team members working from more than 40 different countries across four continents and a flat studio structure that always that allows everyone to speak honestly and directly and to challenge and push each other to do our very best work. We purposely set out to create a different kind of studio, one that encourages creativity, open communication, collaboration, and performance. That quote is the open communication and 
like not setting up barriers and everything, that's fine and good within within some sort of limit. Like you shouldn't be making public statements like the one you did. Like you have to have some realization that when you're the founder of a studio and you hire people, the problem is no one's going to tell you when you're being inappropriate. So this should be a wake up call for them that, hey, oh, we're making people really uncomfortable with our behavior because nothing's going to happen to them. They run the studio, right? But this report comes out and you should eat a little bit of humble pie and be like, oh, maybe we need to make some changes at the very least. And that's just not what I see here. You're, you're These are former employees who are telling you, here's what I experienced and how it affects me. And they just, they don't seem to care. And that that's what's really unfortunate. You know, they, like it seems like they care, but they're also just sort of like, yeah, whatever. Um, the result has been two award-winning games with more on the horizon and a team of professionals who enjoy working together and are excelling and breaking new ground in our industry while also sharing the financial success of Moon Studio. So they say a team of professionals who enjoy working together. Here, here's one of the professionals who used to work with them. Uh, Francisca Cassungrady. So I butchered that name. I worked at Moon Studios for two years. I was the only woman on the story team. I struggled to find the words to express what a soul-destroying experience it was to work with the heads of the studio, Thomas and Genity. The whole studio is built on the lie that quality justifies everything. Verbal abuse, crunch, public, communi- public humiliation, but it just wears you down and burns you out. Burns out people who do not produce quality. Anything good that you had made before they had killed your creative spark was used to lure new unwitting devs in to fill the places of the friends you watch leave one by one. Please don't be fooled. Don't perpetuate the problem by working for places like Moon. We have to stop the defeatist mentality that this is just what the industry is like. There are better places out there. You deserve better. So that came out after the story. So we're reading all about all the stuff here that they said, I'll, I'll, I'll finish their statement, but then it's further corroborated by other people in the industry who have heard similar things. Um, so the result, people were like, they say people like, if at times we were brutally direct in our critiques and challenges, we are also genuine and vocal in our praise, but not according to the story. Like you have people who worked on your team saying that's not true. We are incredibly proud of everything we have built and achieved together. Finally, we appreciate the irony that we, an an Australian and Irish, sorry, that we, an Austrian and an Israeli Jew, started this multicultural enterprise. We view each other as brothers, and like brothers, we sometimes argue and frequently tease each other. We have made jokes at our own expense about the differences in our backgrounds, and there may have been times that our teasing of each other has come off as insensitive and may have made feels feel others uncomfortable. That's not an apology. You're not even saying you're sorry, though. You're just saying, oh, yeah, we totally did that stuff that's in your articles. It was insensitive and probably made other people feel uncomfortable. Continued quote. Like, there's no, unless I'm missing it, I don't see any sort of apology in that statement. And that's the problem here, right? Moon Studios has prospered over, this is still their statement, Moon Studios has prospered for 12 years. We have grown and learned so much over all of these years. We have been privileged to work with many, many great and extremely talented people. We are truly grateful and proud of our team. Those who are here today, as well as those who spent time at Moon and have since moved on to other ventures. And we are happy to have made a positive difference in their lives. We are not perfect, but we deeply care about our talent and are constantly working hard to improve. If we have ever made, oh, here we go. Thank goodness. If we have ever made anyone feel uncomfortable or let anyone down, we regret that and will always strive to do better. Just say you're sorry. We're sorry. <laughs> that word, that word can go a long way. If I, I'm glad they at least said they're they're going to strive to do better, but the problem is you have like five paragraphs just saying that what you what is in this article isn't true which it's clearly been true it's been corroborated publicly by uh francisca who wrote that statement about it so yeah 
There, there's more in the article. In addition to the above sta public statement, GameSpeed has also learned that the founders had a private meeting with current developers about our inquiries. In that 30-minute internal meeting with the team, Coral and Muller addressed some of the questions we raised in an open forum and offered an anonymous feedback system for devs. We've also included some of the comments throughout this story. So the founders have their view, but we talked to a variety of people who had roles across the company who said the place was toxic. It's an oppressive workplace for sure, but it's hard to pinpoint one thing because in isolation, all of these incidents, if they happen once, you would think they were small things, said one game developer. When you're dealing with that for multiple years, you're going to see the decline in people's mental health. I can say that for myself personally, I was properly messed up after we finished. I've never been depressed until that moment. I lost my passion for my job because they drummed it out of me. That's just really unfortunate to, to hear, you know? Um, and then they go on to talk about, let's see here. When I first saw Ori and I hit all the reviews, it was a touching story in the cutesy friendly way. And then I talked to the heads of the studio, said one developer, and it's like, that's not who these guys are. They are not these cutesy people. They're very harsh. It's just unfortunate to read that here, here's the problem. You have this persona where you made this beautiful game Ori, Ori in the sequel, right? And all of this coming out about how you treat your employees, about how crunch ends up happening and how uh, you don't make people feel appreciated. When that comes out, it's it's tarnishes that creation. It has tarnished the Ori creation for many, right? And that's that's just unfortunate. And then... Uh, there's further articles from uh, Jez and Jeff Grubb where basically it sounds like, well, here's what Jez said. I can corroborate much of Dantec's reporting on Moon Studios. I was told Moon founders resorted to personal attacks and bullying towards Xbox's team. That burned all bridges. Spoke with Randall and they talked about it on Xbox too. And basically what it amounts to is this news and this, this, there's even more in this article. Like I'm still scrolling through it. So if you think it's done, it's not. It keeps going for a while. It's a good article. I highly encourage. I'll, I'll link to it in, in the things below. But those are just a few of the beats that were covered in the thing. So we have all these allegations. We have at least one employee publicly talking about it. We have it being cor corroborated by Jeff Grubb and Jez over at Windows Central. And that's just a bummer. So hopefully, like, I don't know what it's going to take for those two to take a long, hard look at how they run their studio and make improvements. But that is basically a non-apology that they have released initially. I think sometimes it's hard to hear that. So maybe this is their first time actually being confronted with the fact that, hey, you're making your employees feel bad, mentally wrecked, basically. And you need to do something to address that. Like you're in a position where that's your responsibility, right? So anyway, I wanted to share this story with you. It's, it's a really unfortunate story to talk about, but that is what's going on with the Ori creators. It turns out, based on several people who've worked with them, that it's a very negative experience. And that that's just putting it mildly. Like there's people who don't even want to work in the industry based on the responses that I see in this article. And that's really unfortunate. So that's what happened. Uh, that is the story that's been going around. And yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what else to say about it, but I, I hope that the two founders take a long, hard look at how they're conducting their business, make some important changes personally with how they conduct themselves as professionals within within their studio and maybe just be a little bit more cognizant of, of your position, right? Uh, that's all I really have to say about it. Just, just not a great story to talk about, to hear that a lot of people are not happy working there, especially because the games were so uh, wonderful, honestly. And now they're tarnished by this story, probably forever. Like every time I play Ori now, I'm just like, well, this is great. Now I know what people had to go through to see this be created though. And that's, that's something that's, that will sit with me personally. I don't know about you. Maybe you don't care, but, um, it's bad. It's not great. Not a great feeling.
Anyway, if you do like my videos, thank you so much for watching. If you want to subscribe, you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. I do appreciate it when you do that. Thank you so much. Uh, real quick shout out to the members. Thank you to all the members who have supported this channel for a very, very long time. I do appreciate you. If you would like to become a member, you can click that join button right down there. It's right there. Thank you so much. I'm going to get out of here. It's one to stew on. I'll link to the story in the, in the comments. I highly recommend you read it. Thank you so much. Bye for now.